Hello, I'm Dr. Tara Palmatier of shrinkformen.com. If you have a question or would like to schedule a session with me, you can reach me at shrinkformen at gmail.com. The topic of this video is, hey, codependence, do you know the difference between being kind and being nice? Nice guys finish last. No good deed goes unpunished. Virtue is its own reward. That all depends upon how one defines nice and one's motivation for, for, for performing good deeds. Being nice in response to someone who consistently mistreats, exploits, and abuses you is you putting yourself in last place. Doing good deeds, hoping a partner or ex will appreciate and reciprocate after years of neither appreciating nor reciprocating can feel like you're being punished. If you're being honest with yourself, you understand that this is a form of self-inflicted punishment. After all, assuming the role of relationship doormat is a voluntary position. You can resign at any time. Why do you continue to be nice to someone who consistently doesn't meet your needs and refuses to acknowledge or dismisses your feelings? What do you expect in return for being nice? Have you explicitly stated this? In other words, is it an overt contract or a covert contract? A covert contract is an unspoken expectation or rule in a relationship that only you know about and, when the expectation is unmet, results in resentment and anger. What do you expect in return for doing good deeds? Recognition, gratitude, reciprocity, loyalty, indebtedness, if virtue is its own reward, then the expectation of appreciation, admiration, or reciprocity for being virtuous isn't virtuous. At best, it's an unconscious manipulation. At worst, it's a deliberate manipulation. How can you tell the difference? Genuine generosity of spirit comes with no strings attached, not the expectation of being liked for doing the good deed, or even a thank you. It just makes you feel good to do the kindness. If it's a codependent manipulation, you'll likely feel resentful, slighted, angry, or a sense of not fair if the desired fruits of your virtue don't materialize. Once you realize your relationship is unbalanced in the give and take department, say something to your partner. If they dismiss, deny, make empty promises, and or respond by saying, uh, yeah, what's your problem? And you continue to give, hoping things will get better? That's on you. You're volunteering for more abuse and exploitation. This can be a tough pill to swallow for many of my clients. If you can relate to the material in this video, I'm in no way saying you deserve to be taken advantage of and mistreated. However, once you recognize this is what's happening in your relationship, it's your responsibility to stop participating in your own abuse. You can set and enforce boundaries and hope your partner will change and grow with you. Or you end the relationship if they can't or won't. Once this kind of dynamic's been established in a relationship, even if your partner isn't personality disordered, it's incredibly difficult to change. Being nice, trying to rescue, fix, save, or chronic caretaking in order to create a dependency in your partner is classic codependency. Codependent individuals confuse being needed with being loved, and there is a difference. The underlying belief is, if you need me, you'll be nice to me, maybe even love me. Codependents are nice and take care of their frequently disordered or addicted or just plain selfish, self-absorbed and immature spouses, family or friends in the hopes that someday it will be their turn to receive similar care and devotion. This rarely happens. Typically, the codependent continues to give, caretake and tolerate abuse and exploitation while growing increasingly resentful, 
demoralized and depleted of energy, money, and their physical and emotional health until they become an empty husk. At this point, either the codependent's self-preservation instincts are activated and they end the relationship, or the abusive, narcissistic, borderline, or psychopathic partner discards them for fresh, robust supply. These behaviors and attitudes are frequently learned in childhood. It's usually the result of being raised by parents or a parent who was abusive, neglectful, emotionally unstable, alcoholic, addicted, emotionally unavailable, personality, excuse me, personality disordered, or some other form of toxic dysfunction. As children, many adult codependents only received affection, attention, or were able to avoid abuse when they took care of their parents. And that's called parentification, a role reversal between a parent and a child. They also only received love or avoided abuse if they didn't bother their parents with their needs. This is why so many codependents have difficulty asking for help and support when they need it. They learned the painful lesson in childhood that they were basically on their own and help would not be forthcoming. Or worse, that they'd be punished, ridiculed, and abused for seeking help, support, attention, and love from their parents. Now I wanna discuss the difference between being nice versus being kind. Um, this video and the article uh, that uh, precedes it arose from a recent comment exchange on the Shrink for Men Facebook page. So Mr. Facebook follower said, choose someone nice and don't be an immature victim. It's not that hard. Ms. Facebook follower responded with, nice is an artificial construct, a pretty mask. Look for kindness, responsible behavior, prudent management of time and money, compatible life goals, and similar spiritual values. Look for a woman who can make you laugh, who is just as happy to grab a picnic basket and have a quiet lunch in the park as to dine in a fancy restaurant, one who's as comfortable in jeans as she is dressed up and doesn't fret if you catch her without makeup, one who's as courteous to the waitress as she is to the CEO of the company, who speaks the truth without tearing down and approaches issues as an adult, not a whiny child. One who isn't dating you as a Pygmalion project. And for those of you who don't know the Pygmalion reference, that was a play that uh, was then adapted into the film, My Fair Lady. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically you know the ultimate makeover story. Um, sorry for my snarkiness. Uh, being nice doesn't necessarily equate to being a kind or good person. I mean, wasn't your abusive, narcissistic, or borderline ex nice to you when they love-bombed you in the early days of the relationship? Would you describe your ex as a kind person or someone who can be nice when it's in her or his best interest to be? Uh, in other words, when they're trying to manipulate someone. When I make the conscious decision to be nice, I'm making the conscious effort to bite my tongue and not say what I'm really thinking, which is often a smart, sane, um, and self-preserving behavior, okay? And there are different reasons for this. One, the person I'd like to lambaste doesn't mean anything to me and or I'll have little to no future interaction with them. For example, some jerk in the checkout line at the airport. Therefore, it isn't worth the effort required to break the B glass in case of emergency. Seriously, it requires a tremendous amount of energy. And maybe this is why so many of my clients' abusive NPD and BPD spouses or exes sleep for 10 plus hours a day. It's exhausting being that miserable all the time. Two, I've identified the individual as personality disordered and don't want to become the target of obsessive hatred or retaliation, especially if they're of no significance to my personal or professional well being. If they are of significance, that requires a get them out of my life safely plan. Three, in social or work settings, I'm passive aggressively nice in order to highlight what a jerk the other person is being. Not being naturally polit politically astute, this was a tough one for me to master in graduate school and 
later on in work settings. And note to anyone in a high conflict divorce or custody case, responding with hostility and incivility, even if it's proportional to your ex may cause judges, custody evaluators, et cetera, to think you're the source of the conflict, especially if you're a man and the narcissistic or borderline ex is a woman. Please be aware of that. As tempting as it would be to respond in kind, don't do it. Four, I'm starving the beast. Or as I like to say, feed a fever, starve a psycho. In other words, I'm refusing to give the wingnut who's trying to push my buttons any satisfaction. Notice none of my reasons for being nice include manipulating someone into being nice to me or attempting to establish intimacy or any kind of relationship for that matter. It's a means to an end and the end is usually I want this person to go away and leave me alone. Being nice is a transaction. In my examples, being nice has nothing to do with being kind. Again, it's strategic and self-protective behavior. Kindness is neither strategic nor self-protective. A person is either fundamentally kind or they're not. It's like having integrity. It either exists or it doesn't. Of course, kind people can have unkind moments. Kind people get depressed, angry, stressed, impatient, etc., and then say or do something hurtful to a loved one or stranger. The difference being, a kind person then feels regret, apologizes, and does what's necessary to mend the hurt. The same goes for integrity. Kindness emanates from seeing the humanity in others, empathy, emotional attunement, self-care, and self-respect. Kind people can also be nice people, perhaps for similar reasons to my personal examples. Doormats are usually nice because they're afraid, afraid they won't be liked, afraid their girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse will leave them if they share their true thoughts and feelings, afraid people will be angry with them if they say no afraid they'll lose a relationship if they expect reciprocity. A former client explicitly said his goal in a relationship was to be the best doormat he could be. He believed that's how he'd be able to hold on to a now ex-girlfriend who barely made the effort to hide her multiple infidelities from him. I believe my exact response to him at the time was, oh, blankety blank, dude, no. Just no. He claimed he felt good about being nice in response to her repeated betrayals. His depression, anger, and resentment said otherwise. He claimed he hoped his ongoing niceness would lead her to feel guilty and thus treat him better. This is how codependents manipulate. His doormatting began in childhood with a physically violent alcoholic stepfather and a mother who was so desperate for a husband, she didn't protect her son. It was a survival coping mechanism that became his adult relationship identity. I'm happy to report that at the time of termination, he was in a healthy relationship with a kind woman. He had to do the work of practicing self-care and self-respect first though. Being a nice doormat is the opposite of self-care, self-love, and self-respect. You can be a kind person without being a doormat. Yes, kind people are also helpful people. I know, I know. You were just trying to help your narcissistic or borderline ex. At least, this is what most of my clients tell themselves until they begin working with me. First, do you know the difference between helping and enabling? Kind people help others in need, meaning you offer support or other resources to assist an individual in being able to care for themselves. 
Nice people enable others who may or may not be in need. You enable someone when you do the work for them that they're capable of doing for themselves. You also enable someone when you protect them from experiencing the natural consequences of their irresponsible, unhealthy, or criminal behavior. Enabling is often part of covert contracts, codependent relationships, and abusive relationships. And there's nothing kind about enabling. Second, precisely what are you trying to help your selfish, self-absorbed, emotionally unstable, immature girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, or ex do? Become a better person? Stop abusing and taking advantage of you? You're not going to accomplish that by being nice. When has a bully, a child bully or an adult bully, ever stopped being a bully because their victim was nice to them after being bullied? All that does is result in you being bullied more. Oftentimes, the kindest thing we can do for someone who is behaving self-destructively is to allow them to suffer the consequences of their choices. That's the only way some people learn and grow. Then there are people who don't mature and evolve, no matter how many natural consequences they experience. These individuals are usually personality disordered. If you're a kind person, my advice to you is to stop being nice to people who deliberately and repeatedly hurt, deceive, exploit, and betray you, unless again, it is for a strategic and self-preservation reason, in which case it's a short-term short strategy, not a way of life. You don't have to sink to their level, but be kind to yourself. Get away and stay away from them. If that's impossible, due to shared minor children, limit contact to the best of your ability. No one respects a doormat, especially not bullies, the opportunistic and exploitative and the personality disordered. Rather, they see you as the perfect target. Now, what sounds better to you? Being a nice person or being a kind person? Thank you for watching. Again, I am Dr. Tara Palmatier of shrinkformen.com. If you have a question or would like to schedule a session with me, you can reach me at shrinkformen at gmail.com. Have a good day. And stop being so nice. <laughs>